Hey, how's it going? My name is Jane. I'm a flying instructor, charter pilot, skydiving jump pilot, and now an aeromedical pilot in Australia. Welcome to another episode of the podcast. In this video, I just want to share some funny and sweet moments that I had with Darwin Air Traffic Controllers in the past six years. If you're one of the ATC working in Darwin and watching this video for some reason, I just want to say thank you for your hard work. You guys do a fantastic job to keep all the pilots safe in the sky. I love you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Anyways, the very first funny story that I have with ATC, I was still flying for the skydiving operation. One time, first flight of the day, after I started the engine, I didn't realize I had an open mic for the radio. You can guess where the story will go. Everyone can hear what I said in the plane for however long. I was chatting with the jump master while taxiing the plane to the passing bay. The jump master asked how I have been. I was like, great, I just started uni, blah, blah, blah. Then I stopped at the passing bay to do the run-up checks for the plane. After that, I asked the ATC for clearance to further taxi to the runway for departure. The ATC said, taxi holding point fitted to runway 11 and congratulations for your uni start. I was like, shocked. Sure. <laughs> I composed myself and said, thank you, holding point fitted to runway 11. Then the whole day, I was wondering why they knew about that. I haven't met anyone working as ATC. At the end, I thought about the possibility of an open mic. I called up the tower and had a chat. They were like, yep, you sure did have an open mic. <laughs> That's the first story. I'm glad that I didn't say anything stupid, you know. That is probably the start of ATC recognizing my voice, which is pretty easy to identify. I think I'm still the only Asian female pilot in Darwin who has an accent that you can't miss on the radio. <laughs> Throughout the three years flying the skydiving ops, I call ATC from time to time, mainly for training purposes. It's like, hi, this is Jane from the skydiving. I'm training a new pilot. I'm planning to do this and that, blah, blah, blah. They were always very nice to me, saying that it's all good, shouldn't be any delay. One time I was flying at Lee Point, the parachute were already out. I was waiting for an approach back into Darwin. Then one of the ATC made me wait for a care flight King Air, which was still more than 10 miles away to land first. I do know that care flight always has priority, but there was plenty of time for me to land. I later did call the tower and have a chat about that. She was super nice about it and explained her decision. Based on the data that she knew about the 1A2, which is the plane I was flying, the approach speed was like less than 80 knots, while the King Air was around 100 to 120 knots, there may not be enough space and time for me to land first. For that, she was absolutely right. However, I told her I didn't really fly 80 knots for the whole time from Lee Point to the runway. I actually do 140 knots with power and high rate of descent, which is unique to skydiving ops. I can do 140 knots all the way to super close base, then slow down for a landing. The caveat was that this only applied to me. Because of my experience, I know this plane very well and my own handling skills. But don't expect any other new pilot to do the same. She was like, good to know. I will make a note for that. Then the next flight on the same day, exactly the same scenario. This time, she cleaned me for a close base first. I was like, yay! It's beautiful that the communication came through. I love that. Later on, in a year or two, I became a charter pilot. When I got promoted from the small single-engine aircraft, the 206 and 210, to a way bigger aircraft, the Caravan. On one of the flights, the ATC said, congratulations to upgrade to a bigger 206. <laughs> I was so happy and say, thank you very much. Mind you, I still haven't met any of them. 
I didn't know them by name, but. I could recognize at least two voices. For the next eight months of me flying the caravan, when it wasn't busy, the ATC from time to time would say hi to me on the radio. At least once every few weeks in the morning, when I request the airways clearance for my flight, they gave me the clearance. I read back. Then they would say hi, Jane, or good morning, Jane. I would say hi back, but I just didn't know their name. I can't say hi, Rebecca, or hi, John. One thing for sure, it will always make my day when ATC say hi to me. Another time, I was flying back into Darwin in the afternoon. The call sign of the caravan that I was flying was U O J. For the aviation alphabet, it will be Uniform Oscar Juliet. But the ATC gave me a clearance and ended the transmission with Uniform Oscar Jane. <laughs> I was like, oh! <laughs> I read back the clearance, then end with Uniform Oscar Jane. <laughs> It made my day. It really made my day, and that was not a one-time occurrence. Whenever that particular ATC was on, and I was flying UOJ, he would do that. Later on, another female ATC started doing the same. My coworker heard that over the radio and said, "This is your plane now." I was like. I agree. <laughs> I told all this story to one of my friends. She's also a pilot in my last company, and she knows almost all the girls in the aviation industry. So I asked, "Who is the female ATC?" She said that could be Jamie. I was like, "Ah,、oh, copy that." One time, finally, the same female ATC and me flying UOJ. She said. Clear the taxi back to the parking. You from Oscar Jane. I got up my courage and said, "Clear the taxi back to parking. You from Oscar Jamie." Then a good five seconds of silence. She came back. Thank you. <laughs> I hope I make her day and everyone's day at the tower. Later on, I started flying the four o two. On one of the flight back into Darwin, the ATC said, "Are you flying four two now?" I said, "I sure am." <laughs> She said, "Congratulations on the four two, then." That made me smile. Side note: I don't like flying the four two caravan. Will always be my favorite plane. Another time, I got a follow request on Instagram from the female ATC. I accepted. Then within an hour, another ATC sent me a follow request as well. I was like, okay, <laughs> you guys are so bored up there. When I flew back in the late afternoon after I landed, the ATC joking saying that we have been stalking you on Insta. <laughs> I said. Oh no! Hope all is good. Then another pilot on the radio said, "Oh, that is cute." <laughs> oh my god, this is so good. I I just love you guys so much. Like you guys make my day always, always, always. Then I left my last company and joined my current company, flying the jet. I was missing in action for a couple of months because of the transition and type rating training in Dallas. Later, I finally started my line training in a jet. When I came back at night, the ATC cleared us to taxi back to parking. I read back. Then she said, "Hello, Jane. Welcome back. Was wondering if you left Darwin." I was like, "Oh, thank you. It's good to be back." Then I stopped flying again for a couple of months because of aircraft maintenance. When I came back for a flight at night again, the other ATC asked, "Is that Jane?" I said, "Sure am." <laughs> He said, "You are back. I haven't heard you flying for a while." I said, "Yeah, plane issue, but..." Glad to be back. That was the last time ATC saying hi to me. I think they have a changeover for all the ATC this year in Darwin. I don't recognize any of them anymore. They stopped saying hi to me. I really miss that truly. To all the ATC out there, thank you very much for your hard work. I can't imagine the stress you have to manage so many aircraft at the same time when it's peak hour for arrival and departure. To Darwin ATC in particular, I love you guys. When you say hi to me, it always make my day. It make my week. <laughs> you have no idea how much is motivating me to keep flying. 
although I love, I love flying the caravan, it was also the most stressful year I had for the last 10 years of flying. I thought about quitting flying altogether. But every time you guys said hi, it just brightened my day. I'm grateful for that. So thank you very much. I really, really appreciate that. I wish you all the best for your next adventure somewhere in Australia. In the future, if we cross paths again on the radio, please say hi. Unfortunately, I am terrible with recognizing voices, so I'm sorry that I can't make the first move to say hi. Oh, oh, last but not least, for my emergency landing in Darwin in early March, I want to thank all the ATC who helped me with my situation. Thank you very much. I'm grateful to have you with me on that day. Anyways, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.